What's up, everybody? Back here with another episode of Between the Ears. I'm Scott Callian, and that is Christopher Hall. Yesterday, we touched on some of the freshmen to watch for the West Virginia Mountaineers this year. And today, we're going to flip it a little bit to where we're going to talk about some of the guys you might not necessarily be thinking about at the top of your head, like the Garrett Greens of the world, or I don't know, the Jaheim Whites of the world, CJ Donaldson's, Cole Taylor, so on and so forth. A few underrated guys that may catch your eye. This is very kind of, uh, I guess this could be kind of controversial because we don't really know what you could really determine as underrated. So I guess it's just based on personal opinion. But I'll kick it off here. We'll go with the offensive side first. I'm going with P. Fox, Pac-Man Fox, Preston Fox. I think this this guy is somebody that's probably not, you know, highly thought of in terms of the wide receiver room because you have so many guys in that in that position room that are probably going to get more looks they're going to get more touches and you just kind of forget about Preston Fox I've kind of forgot about him every now and then too but the kid just continues to come up in big situations he's arguably has the best hands of anybody on that uh in that room so I got to throw him on here he's he's an older guy but somewhat I think that can be a reliable security blanket for Garrett Green, third down situations, maybe even in the road zone at times too. So Preston Fox kicks us off here. I'll start off with Brandon Yates. Um, probably everyone um, that follows West Virginia football knows Brandon Yates, but, you know, everyone's talking about the absence of Zach Frazier. So obviously Frazier with the Steelers more likely going to be a starter for the, starter for the Steelers. Um, cast a very, very big shadow. And Brandon Yates is kind of getting, I don't want to say disrespected, but when everyone's <laughs> saying, well, what are you going to do without um, Zach Brazier? Brandon Yates is right there, ready to go. I think he, this offensive line is going to be better than last year. And I think Brandon Yates is going to be a big reason why. And that's not, and I've had to say before, that's not a knock on Zach Brazier. I just think Brandon Yates, he has 33 starts under his belt. Go back to, um, Man, kid was cool under the pressure when Zach Frazier crawled off the field last year. Those guys didn't skip a beat uh, on the offensive line for that game-winning drive. So, Brandon Yates is somebody you probably heard a lot of, uh, but because of the uh, Zach Frazier taking his NFL opportunity, he he's probably not getting recognized the way he should. So, that, 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 I'm going to throw him right as my number one. I like that, yeah, because I, I agree. Everyone's just thinking that the production is going to fall off. I don't know if that's going to be the case at all. Um, it's harder to play Zach Frazier, though. I mean, it, it, it is. is. They're two different type of players, though. So Brandon Yates will definitely. Uh, but it's not like you're throwing it'll, a true freshman. Definitely leave out. his shadow before the next guy. The next year, they're like, "What are we going to do yeah. without Yates?" So uh, Brandon's going to be that guy. Fatorma Moba, mainly just because I love this guy's name. But no, I almost he, picked he, him just because of his name. <laughs> he's he is such he's a football, a such a, a great football name. He's just got star written all over him. I don't know about all that, but I do think he can be kind of like an all Big 12 performer, third team or so. But um, again, this is kind of a, a weird spot too, where you don't know what you're really going to get on the interior, on the defensive line. You lose Mike Lockhart. You start to panic because – he was so good last year, and he was really the only true piece that West Virginia lost in the portal, in my opinion. Um, but Mulva stepped in and did well last year in his role. And now him, I mean, heck, you could probably even throw him and Russell into this conversation too. Those two guys are going to split time. But I think Mulva, being more experienced, more seasoned, I think he's going to be the guy that's going to eventually take over that spot and get the most reps there. And don't forget, week one, against his old team so he's going to come out i think with his hair on fire for that one get off to a good start maybe ends up with the sack that's an early prediction but for torma Mulba, with my second uh under the radar player i was assigned before on this one um i'm going to say josiah trotter again probably okay. someone a lot of people know but nationally probably forgot about because he had that season ending injury last year and i think that this kid uh is dynamic uh, absolutely already has an NFL-ready body as a redshirt freshman. So it's only a second year in here. Obviously comes from great pedigree. Uh, 
probably don't need to say a lot about him <laughs> right off the bat tonight, but I think nationally uh, he's he's really going to catch recognition quickly and really um, catapult himself into probably his final year next year. I mean, the kid is it. I mean, he's everything that you're asking for in a linebacker. So from a national perspective, or if you needed some reassurance, I think Josiah Trotter uh, is someone that's going to really fly on the scene. His dad played in the NFL. His brother's now in the NFL. <laughs> I think we see a trend here. Yeah, there's that that trend probably is most likely going to continue. Yeah. Um, hopefully, uh, how obviously, cool. how cool injury would that be? injury is always a concern at linebacker, but especially since he already had one. But I think seems like he's ready to go. Yeah. Clear mind, clear head, ready to fly around. How cool would that be if he ends up in Philly with his brother Jeremiah Trotter Jr.? That would be pretty special. I yeah, mean, that I, would be. Hopefully, know, that can I, all work out the way that the way that family's kind of worked out so far. Um, yeah, that would be that would be pretty cool. Because Trotter right. played in Philly too, right? Make sure. Yeah, um, yep. yeah that's what I thought. You got to keep the the bloodline going there. Keep so. the bloodline going. Eddie V is where I'm going with this. And again, probably another player everybody knows about if you watch West Virginia football. But I don't know that he gets the love or the respect that he probably should. He's not going to get 10 sacks. He's not a Dante Stills. He's not – I don't even know if he's quite – Not a Dante Stills yet, maybe. Yeah, maybe not yet. Maybe not. But – He's just somebody that just fits the run well. He is a, a disruptor in the pass game. Again, even though the sacks don't show up, he can still affect the pass game. Plays with maximum effort. You see him chasing down guys from behind all the time. This is somebody the coaching staff just absolutely loves. They rave about him every chance they get to. Eddie V, I think, is in store for a big, big season. I don't know what his future looks like beyond this year, but – I think there's a good chance if he stays healthy, puts together a good year, he's going to have a chance to to find his way onto an NFL roster next year, be it as a, a draft pick or undrafted free agent. He's going to land somewhere. I'm going to take tight end Traylon Davis. Um, this is probably my best under good the one. radar. That's actually under the radar. Uh, obviously, got Cole Taylor. He's he's good chance that he may lead the team in receptions uh, this season. Uh, he's not going to get that kind of production, but I think he's going to have his moments this year where he's going to emerge like, oh, yeah, Traylon Davis. Like, yeah, he's on the roster for sure. Um, <laughs> he can catch the ball. Yes, he can catch the ball. So I think kind of with the shuffle and if the receivers have the production that we're hoping that they do this year, he's someone that can kind of sneak out a lot a lot in the passing game and have, maybe have a couple moments and maybe big game turning moments uh, throughout the season. But I think you're going to probably see him more often than not. I think. He's been great in the running game. I think he's only going to get better there to kind of help these running back. My last one is a transfer. And, again, this is where we kind of get weird here with is he really under the radar or not because he's slotted the start. He's been raved about by the coaches, but that's cornerback Aiden Garns. When he came here, I didn't realize how light he was. I knew he was light. Jordan, I think it was Jordan Lester, Shadon Brown talked about it the other day. He came in at 163 pounds, and he's already jumped up to like 180 or 190 or something like that. It's insane. But they feel like he is pound for pound one of the strongest players in that secondary. He hadn't given up a catch in the first five practices, according to the coaches. I don't – that's unofficial. But everything that I saw from him on tape last year, and even back in that West Virginia game, he made a few plays in that game. If you go back and watch – he he stands out, and I don't know if if he's going to come in right away and, and be your number one corner. I think that's probably more so what they're relying in, in Garnett Hollis, but Aiden Garns is, is a ball player now, and I think he's going to make his mark very, very early and kind of have a steady, quick rise um, as that top dog in that room at some point. Uh, I'm going to transfer as well in Jaden Bray. Um, a lot of receivers, obviously, on this roster. Someone's got to emerge. My early front runner right now is Jaden Bray. I think he can be that guy. Just from what I've seen, he's got he's got really good hands, and he knows how to get to the high point. He knows how to get to knows how to track the ball. So I think this is the explosive receiver that West Virginia may have on their roster. 
taking a leap because on this because all these receivers over the years kind of really underperformed. They haven't been consistent. So for me, this is a big leap on this one. You can um, throw, throw the darts blindfolded on this one. You'll hit one of them. Yeah. So I, I think it. I think it really is going to be uh, Jaden Bray, just because most likely, uh, as long as he's played, uh, he has more experience than the other guys. So and just again, based on everything I've seen, the production isn't there. Isn't there yet? But I think nationally, I think everyone knows probably West Virginia. That's probably the big transfer uh, that everybody knows. But I think nationally, this is another kid that can emerge. And possibly be one in top five, top ten, probably top five uh, receivers production wise in the league. Yeah, he owes West Virginia a couple scores too, since he <laughs> scored on them yeah. on them last year in Morgantown. Yeah. So he's got to he's got to get that back on the right side. But yeah, I think that's a good list. I mean, there's there's a ton of other guys that we probably could have talked about. Again, you can, yeah, I mean, real realistically, the way we move the goalposts, you can say pretty much everybody, 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 everybody on this roster, and really, we could have made obviously Jaheim White, right? Jaheim White nationally is not getting enough attention. Garrett Green, so, he, so he's under the radar. Garrett Green's got two awards, right? <laughs> he's on the watch list. I don't know. We can make an argument for Garrett you Green. You can. I think you can. But he's on too many uh, award lists right now. But Gene White, obviously, you can throw him out there. Um, really, yeah, Cole but... Taylor from it. I mean, all these guys. You can really say all these guys. Sean Martin hasn't had the production. Uh, but obviously, being a West Virginia kid, his name is really well known throughout the fan base. So, like, but not nationally. So, move yeah. the goalposts on how you want. You can say the whole roster outside of Garrett <laughs> Green. I'm not. I'm not accepting Garrett Green at this time. Dang it. But no, I mean, I think the Jaheim thing is that's interesting because, like Neil said, he didn't even get asked about him a single time out at media day. And this is a guy that had what three of his last five games of the year. He went over 100 yards. He went over 200 against Cincinnati. Also, cut a like an 80 yard touchdown in that game. Like I think 80 or 75 percent of his rushing production came from October 30th or whatever and later. Like that's insane that he almost rushed for 800 some yards in the final month of the season. I don't think that gets talked about enough. So yeah, I don't know um, why that's not a, a talking point for a lot of people. We're going to talk about it. Uh, we'll talk about the divide, the division of labor between he, CJ Donaldson, Garrett Green, even in the run game, Jalen Anderson, we'll get to all that stuff between now and Penn state. There's a lot to talk about. We are going to be taking a break uh, for the next couple days. We will be back on Sunday. Again, our in-season schedule, Tuesday, Wednesday, Sunday for Between the Ears. So make sure you hit that subscribe button on our YouTube page at West Virginia on SI and follow us on X at SI underscore WVU to get the notification when we drop a new episode. So that'll do it for us today. For Christopher Hall, I'm Scott Callan. Thank you guys for watching. We'll check back with you here in a few days.